just to start. So a quick review of gross anatomy of the pelvis. So on the front here, you have your ASIS, and those are exactly right where my thumbs are. You have your pubic tubercles, which is right here. Of course, you have your sacrum, and then you have your PSIS back here. Okay. All right, so generally what you would do is you would start with your motion testing. So there's two major motion tests that determine which side is actually dysfunctional or uh, which, which innominate is actually stuck. So the first is you have what's called a standing flexion test, which is essentially you have your patient stand in front of you and then you have them bend over and touch their toes. And what happens in this one is whatever side uh, whatever nominant that is dysfunctional will catch on the sacrum because it's stuck, jammed or so, again, it's the sacrum. So it'll move further. So as they're bending forward, one will kind of catch and move forward more so than the other side. And that's how you know which side is actually dysfunctional. So in this case, so if my right side kind of caught and went up like that, you follow the, uh, you follow the PSIS up with your thumbs. So that would be a right-sided lateralization or you would know that you have a problem on the patient's right nominant. Okay, so the other one is called the ASIS compression test. So the ASIS compression test is exactly what it says it is. Essentially, you have your patient lay prone, and then you put the heels of your hands on top of their ASIS, and then you just compress. And you want to compress at an inward angle so you can kind of if it's catching against the side of the sacrum, that you'll feel that. And so after you do this on a few people, you'll actually be able to tell pretty easily. This is probably my favorite uh, way to tell if someone has a uh, dysfunctional pelvis. You just press and you can feel that one side won't be moving as well as the other side. So pretty simple, pretty, pretty good way to test. All that being said, let's just move on to the actual dysfunctions. So I'm gonna say that my patient had a standing compression test or a standing flexion test on the left side. So it's always the patient's left, so this would be this side right here. So we're gonna say this side is the dysfunctional side. So um, the first dysfunction is called an anterior rotation. And in this rotation, all it is is that that anomaly is rotated anteriorly. So with this rotation, you see that the, the ASIS becomes inferior on this side because it's rotated forward. And then in back, if we flip this over, hopefully it doesn't get messed up. Okay, there we go. So on back, you can see that on that left side that the patient has a superior PSIS on the back as compared to the other side. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we'll start talking. We'll talk about a posterior rotation, which is the exact opposite of an anterior rotation. So, posterior, anterior like this, posterior like this, and the landmarks are the exact opposite of what you would find. So, you can see here that the ASIS is superior on the left if it's rotated posteriorly, and the PSIS on this left side is inferior on the back. So, higher on this side than it is on this side. All right, and so in addition to those, the rotations, you can also have what's called a superior shear or an inferior shear. And so, I'm gonna have to break my, say, break my SI joint here in order to show you this one a little bit better. So, a superior shear or an inferior shear is just, on the anominates, is just that that side is higher or that side is lower. So superior shear, you're gonna have superior landmarks on the front and on the back. You see back here that, that PSIS is way higher. And this is way exaggerated. This is like an open book pelvis that you, you would probably see on your emergency medicine rotation. <laughs> so this is not, that's not an osteopathic dysfunction, but for demonstration's sake. Okay, so, and an inferior shear is exactly the opposite. You would just have everything inferior in the front. So you would see that the ASIS is inferior and the PSIS is inferior. Okay. Oh, let's put the pelvis back together here. So in addition to those, the, the anominates can actually also get stuck in, flared, or out flared. And how you tell this is first you do your lateralization testing and you can tell which side is dysfunctional. And then what you wanna do is you want to look at the ASIS compared to the umbilicus and you can kind of eyeball it or some people will actually take a measuring tape and measure from the belly button to 
the ASIS. And whichever one is dysfunctional and whichever one is further away, that means that you either have an in-flare or an out-flare. So, um, in exactly what you would think it is, that an out-flare is stuck out like this, in-flare is stuck in like this. So these are actually very common after childbirth. Um, I'm sure they probably have a test question with that somewhere. It seems like I've seen one in a question bank at one point. Somebody had, uh, had, a, had a baby, uh, and their umbilicus is um, further away from their ASIS on one side than the other side, and that, that's how you would know what they were talking about. They were talking about an anominate. Okay. So the last kind of dysfunctions that I'm going to talk about are the superior pubic shear and the inferior pubic shear. So these are mostly isolated to right here, the symphysis pubis, and you can see that you have this pubic tubercles right here. So um, these can be isolated or in combination with an innominate dysfunction. But all you would see here is a superior pubic shear would mean that one side's higher than the other and an inferior pubic shear would mean that one side is lower than the other. And that's all that is. And you can diagnose this with a compression test. Basically, you, that's that test that you're just pushing down on the pubic shear right there. And, okay, and so to finish, we're just gonna put everything all together. So for example, say a question gives you the following exam findings. So the standing flexion test is positive on the right. So we're gonna say this positive on this side. And the ASIS is superior on the right and the PSIS is inferior on the right. And what kind of dysfunction is most likely present in this patient? So ASIS superior on the right, and PSIS is inferior on the right. So what does that make? That just means that, that you would have a posterior rotation. See how easy that was? Okay, so uh, sometimes on these questions, be warned that they will try to trick you and what they'll do is they'll say that testing was positive on one side and then they'll give you the landmarks from the other side. So for example, they'll say that the ASIS compression test was positive on the left, so positive on this side, and then they'll give you the findings from the right side. So for example, uh, say that your standing flexion test was positive on the left side and that you had uh, superior ASIS and a an superior PSIS on the left side. So you would actually have is an inferior nominate shear because this would be the dysfunctional side or the side that was lateralized to during the testing. Okay, and that's all for today. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more AOC PMR OMT videos.